for grace. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your kindness. We thank you for your word on today. God, we ask that you would uh, send your word and that our, your word would take root inside of our heart and that your word would be the mirror and that your word will convict our hearts, God, to do what you have called us to do. And then God, help us. Help us with what we fall short. God, for I recognize I'm a work in progress Hallelujah. and I need your help. In Jesus' name, thank God. Thank amen God. and amen. amen. Praise God. I truly give an honor to God. Amen. Who's ahead of my life and keeping it watching my very just so to Pastor Simpkin and First Lady Simpkins. Amen. And to the mothers of Zion, Mother McCoy, Mother White, Mother Johnson, Mother Henry, all the saints of the most high God. All right. How many know that um, learning God's word is exciting? It is exciting. I don't know about you, but I get excited when it comes down to learning the word of God. I get excited for learning the word of God. And so I like to start things off with like a little icebreaker. Is that all right with everybody? Hey, Amen. A little icebreaker. You know, and an icebreaker is designed uh, to ease you know, to make it a little bit easy as you get ready to go into something. And this being my first time, I know y'all praying for me. Amen. I know you're praying for me. All right. Amen. So I thought on today will be around the table. And what I want us to do is think about the table. And you can think about the table. Somebody might be at their table right now, but you think about a table. And when you was coming up, uh, as a child, when you was raising your kids, you know, you think about the table and what you do with your grandkids. And, 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 and when I thought about this uh, around the table, I thought about our family worship. When we used to raise our children, uh, we, we, we come to the table, all right? And so here's the icebreaker. The icebreaker is name an unforgettable experience that took place with people you love around the table. And that could be a family member, a coworker, a friend, a church member, your grandchildren. That can be someone that you um, a fellowship with uh, when you think about the table. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you one. Because when you come to the table, when you come to the table, uh, there's communication at the table. When you, when you get to the table, you know, you have to have a dialogue. And, 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 and when my kids was coming up, I wanted to, to sup with my kids. I wanted to see what they were doing. I wanted to know where they was going. And, 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 and one day our oldest son, we was at the table eating. And one day our oldest son, he said, I got, I have, I have something that's gonna make y'all crack up. And we said, what is it? He said, well, why did the pig go oink, oink? And we well, we was trying to figure out why, why did the pig go oink, oink? And I don't know why the pig go oink, oink. Uh, 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 what, no, he said, why did the pig want to cross the street? That's what he said. Why did the pig want to cross the street? And then we didn't know. So he said to go oink, oink. And we thought that was so funny. But what I noticed in that child that child can make you laugh no matter what you going through. That showed me that in the midst of anything until this day, you know, he's able to make you laugh when you don't even feel like laughing. You know, he has that little gift uh, to make you laugh when you are heavy, when you kind of weight it down, he just knows what to say to make you laugh. So I just want to throw that out there. Does anybody have any unforgettable experience uh, with someone that you know uh, that have happened at the table? Because the table is going is, is a very important thing uh, in this lesson on today. Anybody have maybe one or two want to express some type of experience, an unforgettable experience they had at the table? And Sister Tanisha ask you. So this is this is real um, recent. This is like today. So this um, I, I'm my my granddaughter, my five year old granddaughter's tutor 
for her homeschooling. She's uh, five, right? So her teacher says she needs to learn more on sounding out her words and learn the, um, the sounds to the alphabet. <clears throat> and I don't have patience. So I've been praying for patience, praying for patience, right? So I'm telling her, okay, what does H say? And she's, she's like getting frustrated, starting to cry. I'm at the point now, okay, what does J say? Give me some J words. She looking at me, first she'll tell me, and then she kind of, you know, stopped. And then I'm like, okay, I'm getting frustrated. I'm one second from shaking her. And I was like, what is a J word? She looked at me and was like, Jesus. <laughs> and that just made me stop. I had to laugh. I was like, ooh, I was about to shake her. She just brought me back down. I was like, okay, we done for today. Let me go ahead and get ready to get on Bible study now. But it was just funny because I was about to lose it. And when she said that the J word was Jesus, I was kind of like, oh, okay, okay, let me let me come down. But that was my little around the table moment for the evening. Great. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, do we have another one? Yes, Sister Dignus Smothers. All right. So about is not quite that profile, but at growing up, we always sat around the table with eight of us in our family. And so we always had, we had to say our prayers. And I had this brother like your son, and he would always say, Moses wept and Jesus crept. And Joe went down the back doorstep. <laughs> and everybody, everybody would be laughing and laughing and laughing. And, you know, we, that would about, probably be about the only time that we didn't get in trouble. Because, you know, my mom said we got to say a prayer. And he would all, you know, some days he wouldn't say it, but he would always say that prayer. And, you know, food in those days was short. And so he was the brother that could trick everybody out, the younger the younger one of us. You know, we checked in. It was school time. Who got in trouble today? Because you know somebody did. It was a time of fun for us. We ate and then we sat and we talked. And my brother would always steal your food off your plate somehow. We would get two pieces of chicken. I'll never forget that. And I always came up short because somehow he'd tell me, look out the window and snatch my food. Or he would tell my sister, look out the window and he'd grab her chicken. He was just a jokester. And, you know, dinner time was always a really, really fun time at our house, even though we didn't have much. And even though we was poor, we didn't know we was poor. We thought we was eating steak and lobster. You know, we didn't know that, you know, that other people were eating better than us and that we ate the same thing over and over again. But I, I just remember his prayer, Jesus, Moses weapon, Jesus crept. That was his favorite. <laughs> he thought that was the best, the most profound ver the, uh, uh, verse in the world. You know, that was his prayer every time. So, you know, a lot of stuff happens around the table, as you say. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that. Sister, Br uh, our missionary, is there anyone else before we move on? No, I don't see any more hands. All right, we, 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 we thank God for those wonderful memories. You know, memories is, nobody can take our memories. You know, we can hold on to our memory. How many of y'all have ever came to the house and, and you walked into your house and your mother was cooking and the food smelled so good? It smelled so good and you just knew that you was getting ready to eat and you looked like it had, it looked like it was some smothered steak and some potatoes and it smelled so good. And then you get to the table, it's liver. <laughs> I couldn't stand liver. And not just that, she made it worse. She had those sweet peas, you know, and all of a sudden you be like, ugh, this is terrible, you know. But as of today, I still don't eat liver uh, to this day, nor uh, sweet peas. I'm sorry, I just don't do it. But we thank God for those um, unforgettable experience. All right. The tables are a place where many different people come together and make connections and have fun. And as Sister Smother, Missionary Smother said, you know, her brother, he used to make jokes and my son used to make jokes. And, and there we come to con connect with one another. And when we have fellowship at the church, you know, we have dinner, we come to the table and we laugh with one another and we have fun with one another. I hear somebody said pig feet. Uh, my mama used to cook those pig feet and I want to eat pig feet today. I tell y'all the truth. But, you know, we, we, we make connection. You know, we make connection. And that's what God wants us to continue to do is to continue to make connections with one another, especially when it comes down to building a relationship. 
all right? It's where relationships can start, they grow, and they even sometimes it ends, you know? And, 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 and my last time with my dad was at the table. You know, when I thought about this, it was at the table and he mentioned that he wanted to eat some gumbo. So I made him gumbo for Christmas and he couldn't do nothing but take a sip. Amen. But not knowing that was going to be the end. And so, but, but at the table, it's a lot of things go on at the table. Life at the table can seem predictable and routine, or it can be surprising and unusual. You know, how many of y'all have had some surprising information came to the table. When you sitting at the table, somebody give you some happy news, you know, some surprising news, all right? Um, a lot of things go on at the table. Whenever people sit and do life together, at some point or another, interesting things are bound to happen. Can you remember that? Some interesting things are about to happen. I'm recalled uh, at the table when my son-in-law uh, out of nowhere asked to marry our daughter. And so it, it, it was interesting and it was, uh, it was uh, all of a sudden, uh, they just wanted to talk with us, uh, but then something glorious happened. And at that, it is just one of the many reasons why some people get uncomfortable uh, at the idea of getting closer to others. And, and, and what I'm saying here, you know, um, sometimes it's, it, it's a little hard. Some people find it a little hard to really be themselves, to, to be themselves and, and allow you to, to get to know them. It, it, some people find it a little hard for that to happen, um, and be, it, it could be because some 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 things that have happened uh, in their lives, or they could be one of those people that that just like to sit back and observe, you know. Um, but uh, it is we 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 want to build a relationship. The concept of building a relationship can be scary. For some people. Why you say that, Sister Ivory? Whether you're getting closer or making deeper connections, many people will still have some type of fear about knowing and being known about others. As we consider how we can create deeper connections, don't you want to create a deeper connection? with your sister and your brothers, amen. And even with the world, because we wanna win the world, right? Not only do we reveal our experiences when we at the table, but we also have a deep need to have them. When we share experiences with other people, Think about the good times. We talk about the good times. We talk about the bad times. We talk about the in-between times. We talk about the marriages. We talk about the babies being born. We talk about the grandkids graduating from junior high school, getting ready to go into high school. These are some of the conversations we can have at, at the table. We're sharing our lives with an individual when we begin to open up and start sharing. We build in a connection with that individual. And how many know it's very essential to build a relationship up with your brother and sister, especially in Christ, as well as your sibling, all right? Building a relationship up with your family and building a relationship with God is one of the most essential thing as a servant of the most high God. Here we go. Discussion. Discussion. Okay. We, 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 we at the table, y'all. Let's have a little discussion. 
And the discussion is what does the image of a family table represent to you? That's to everyone, that's to the whole class. What does the image of a family table represent to you? And if you look down there, I put a little things to give us some type of little, little examples, you know, like coming together, communicate, laughing, learn about one another, love. What does it mean to you? Missionary Hooker and then Missionary Smith. Have their hands up. Okay. Yeah. Um, this was something that my husband and I were just discussing. Um, I grew up with a family of eight of us and then our mother, father, grandmother, and we always had people from the church or coming from another state or whatever coming and staying with us. And we ate at the table together as a family. And um, it was it was good memories for me. Um, you know, we laugh, we joke, we talked about how we would eat food and we didn't like it. We put a napkin, put it in our lap or, <laughs> you know, things like that. Our daddy would love us up for the table if we didn't eat our vegetables. But when you think about those times now, you think about how warm and good it feels inside. Mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. husband was sharing that um, he comes from a family of 10, but they're so spread apart that they never sat at a dinner table and ate together. And to me, it's been reflected in how his relationships with his brothers and sisters are. And we talk about that off and on, you know, and I just thank God for family. I think for the values that have been instilled in us, because even with us, it helps us with our children and it helps us with one another. You all know that me and Pastor are extremely close and my younger sister, Lisa, and I are. I may not be as close to some of the other ones, but I love them dearly. So I see that how that's how it's been reflected in our lives. Thank you. Hey, Amen. Absolutely great. Um, missionary, is there another? Yes. Uh, yes. Good evening. I agree wholeheartedly with what Missionary Hooker said because in my childhood, when we grew up, there was there's five, I there's five kids and then my mother and father. And we always had dinner at the table or our meals at the table. And we'd sit and we'd talk about our day. We'd talk about, you know, plans for the future. And like she said, we'd laugh, we'd joke, we'd cry sometime, you know, we'd have our family discussions, our family meetings at the table in the kitchen. And um, yeah, just wonderful memories. And, and as my kids were coming up, I would, I always make sure that we had our meals at the table mm -hmm. so they knew, you know, and it taught us how to set the table, you know, mm -hmm. how, to, how to set a table properly, a, a casual meal or a formal meal. My mom, which told us how to set the table. So a lot of um, kids these days don't know how to set a table. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to, you know, fork, knife, spoon and plates. They, their, their plate is their, their, their tables are lap because they're sitting from the TV watching, you know, whatever during mm -hmm. their meals. But I, I thank God for the, the table because it does bring back a lot of good memories. Amen. 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 That's a good point, uh, Sister Smith. I remember my mom did the same thing. We, we set the table. She taught us how to properly set a table. And, you know, we passed that on down. If you go to each one of my sister's house, you will see their tables are already set. You know, so that's a good one right there. Missionary? Uh, Burnett, do we have another before we move on? Uh, no, I didn't see any more hands raised. Hey, amen. Let us see what the word says in, in Mark, the eighth chapter, verses 27 through 38. All right. And it says this. I'm going to read it in the King James, and then I do like to read it in a, a different version. And Jesus went out and his disciples into the town of Caesarea Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Whom do men say I am? And they answered, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah and others, one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, thou art the Christ. What an insight. And he charged them that they should 
tell no man of him. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he spake that saying openly and Peter took him and he began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou sayest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciple also, he said unto them, listen, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. You know, we thank God for his word. We, we thank God for the gospel. The gospel is nothing but the good news. It's just simply the good news. And here we see Jesus having a heart to heart talk with his disciple. Number one, what is he doing? He's giving them some insight of his identity as well as theirs. And before I, I'm, I'm going to say this, but then I want you to think about this. What does it take to follow him? Listen, in verse 31, let me go back to verse 31. And he began to teach them that the son of man must suffer thing, many things and be rejected by the elders and of the uh, chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days be risen he be going to rise again let me say that again rise again listen Christ is letting us know that in order for us to be with him we're going to have to give up something and we're going to have to give up ourselves we have to be willing to say that for God I live and for God I die. In order to follow the, the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to die to self. We got to die to this old nature. We have to say, Lord, here am I. I surrender. I surrender my life. I surrender my will over to your will. Yes, this walk gets tough. Yes, I don't have it all. I know and recognize I'm a work in progress. But yes, it gets tight over here. Yes, the work gets tough. Amen. But the reward, hallelujah, is so much greater. Thank God. The reward, amen, is so much greater. Can nobody match the reward that God has for us? It is unique all by itself. The Lord wants us to totally surrender to him. Totally surrender and take total responsibility for our life as well as our own action. And when we do this, then we can reach out and help your brother that's at the table. That you're trying to get to come to the table. That needs to know Christ. All right? That's what God wants us to do. We want to be able to take that hand and then pull your brother in and show your brother how to surrender over to Christ. 
Showed them how to give up to Christ. Showed them how to walk in holiness. Showed them how to walk this walk of salvation. And that is by surrendering and taking responsibility for our actions. When Christ tells us to come, he is basically telling us that we got to die to self and surrender our all over to Christ. Just how he did, he surrendered his life and willingly gave it and was obedient to his father. If Christ did it, then we are his disciples and God want us, amen. He want us to be able to, to have this glorious life in Christ. He want us to be able to die to this old nature, all right? He want us to be able to die. I hear the scripture over in Galatians 22. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. How am I gonna help my brother and my sister that's at the table, that's struggling with sin, that's struggling with pride, that's struggling uh, with lust. How am I going to help them? I'm going to have to be able to tell them how I got over, how God bought me out. Amen. I remember I got to have a dialogue. I have to have a story. I'm telling them at the table and letting them know the same God that bought me out, the same God that delivered me is the same God that can do it to you. And this is why we have to crucify this old flesh. In any sense, but Christ lives in you. What are you saying, Sister Ivory? What are we saying? We're saying, say yes to the Lord. Tell God yes. My hope is in God. My trust is in God. God said, are you willing to surrender yourself? Are you willing to give up? And, 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 and let you know that the enemy is going to test you. He's going to push your buttons. He's going to push your buttons to make that old nature rise up. But the scripture said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You running a race. God is greater. You running a race. You run this race. You run it with the Lord on your side. You ask the Lord to help me, help me in this race that I may be able to help my brother. All right? Because why? We're trying to finish this race, this salvation race. We're trying to finish it. So we help us one to another. I got you, you got me. You support me, I support you. Amen? All right. Let's move on. Um, Pastor yeah. Simpkins has his hands up. All right, Pastor. The missionary, uh, this is wonderful, and I agree. Uh, it is that interaction, and in the Bible talks a lot about, uh, matter of fact, in, in, uh, in the second chapter of Acts, it talks about how the saints continue steadfast in apostles' doctrine, breaking bread from house to house. It was at the table that they began to know each other. Uh, develop relationships and you all know I'm always talking about fellowship builds relationship and that's that's one of my phrases here for the church but I have a question and I put it in a couple of people answered uh, in the chat box and it was uh you mentioned that we have to surrender you know we have to surrender in order to glory God and so I, my question was because all of us are dealing with some things in our life and so it is how do we surrender to God all at once or progressively as we as we go i would say progressively because i think it, it took you time to get where you're at to get to, to where you're at and it, it, i mean it may not seem like it but it takes time to get anywhere right so it's going to take time to change or to alter things too it, it's not just going to happen overnight and if you push yourself too hard you may get weary and then you know not want to do it 
or just grow tired of doing it in stock. So I think it's progressive. First Lady, then the Hunters, and then Sister Stevenson. Well, praise God. Well, I'm just going to take a page out of my pastor's book. I often heard my pastor say, you know, when you get saved and you love the Lord and you give yourself to him, everything don't drop off at one time. Some things you have to work with, you know. So therefore, uh, like um, Sister Smith, it is progressively as you walk this walk, some things drop off. And sometimes it's a process. A lot of things we have going on, we don't want to let go. And it's a battle and we're fighting it. But the closer and closer you get to the Lord and the closer and the more and more you learn about his word, you have that desire to please him. So therefore, definitely, it is, they have to participate. It, it is a process. Amen. Nothing all comes off at one time. Because I, I, I look at it like this. When you get undressed, you don't take off everything at one time. You may start with your shoes and then with your socks. So it's a process. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, I, I love the question that Pastor brought up. And I'll take it back to correlate it with the lesson and relationships and at the table, even at the table, um, there was that doubt in Thomas, like, you know, let me see, right? After Jesus, let me see, you know, your hand um, after Jesus returned. And I think in relationships and the importance of sitting down at the table and talking is that we don't know what we don't know. And as we get saved, we think we got it all together until there's those that are closest to you on the outside looking in, you know, like us sitting down to the table with my kids. I, every day I'm just in awe, like, where did they learn this at? You know, it's not textbook. It's just things that God reveals to them. And you're like, oh, I do do that. You know, they'll talk about, you know, how here in the house I could be fussing and fussing and the phone rings and it's like, hello, sir, how are you? <laughs> and they talk about how my demeanor and my voice change. But that's not something that I would normally see um, if you're not with building relationships with those that trust God enough to reveal you to you. The Bible says, examine yourself. And so I think it's progressive. As we grow, as we build relationships, there's those on the outside that come looking in that helps us grow, that helps us identify those things about ourselves. Getting married. I've never spent this much time with somebody in my life other than Jesus and just being flesh and just people looking at you and my husband looking at me or me looking at him. It's always like, oh, so God uses relationships and people to help us examine ourselves, to help us see the things that we don't see because, you know, we don't sleep with the mirror in front of us all the time. So I think that that's a great question and it is, it is a progressive walk as you build relationships and meet people you learn new things you learn new things not just about you but this walk with christ just like we're in bible study now we're learning something else so we're growing a little more and so that's all that i i wanted to add it's progressive as we meet new people build new relationships bring others to christ learn and testify we learn about ourselves as well amen Everybody said what I was going to say, so I don't have to say nothing because I was in the same book with Pastor. You know, some things drop off, you know, as you go and you progress. You know, I I had to, you know, I will pick stuff back up, you know, so I had to go back down and drop it back off and keep moving, right? And so Sister Lanita was, I was going to say about kids being a mom. Ooh, my table. It was, it hurt, it was ouch, you know, because I let them express themselves to me as a mom and they did it very respectful. And they gave me my props when it was due, but then some things I had to be accountable. So when we at the table, we gotta be accountable for uh, during the conversation instead of passing it on or blaming somebody else, the self-examination, right? So the table, you got to be ready to sit at the table, you know, sitting at the table with pastor. Woo. 
I digress. Love you, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Those are wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, answers and, 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 and participation. We, we, we totally love those. And, and, and as you know, it, 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 we, we, we can really say this is like a little table chat, fireside side chat. We, we talk and we communicate, and, you know, and that brings us right into uh, that, that second question. We sharing, you know, we sharing information. We sharing big ones, little ones. You know, everyday things that go on. Sister Tanisha was talking about this, something that happened today. You know, um, that just brings us right into that 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 second part of the question. You know, uh, what 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 connections? You know, what was it about the table that helped those connections happen? And everyone was talking about it and sharing, which helps those connections to build. It helps us to build. Y'all don't know me, and I don't know y'all. But I know Pastor Simpkins and First Lady Sister Missionary Burnett, you know, um, but I'm learning, you know, by opening up and having an opportunity to come on the prayer line, have an opportunity, you know, to come down and, you know, at, uh, in the parking lot and, and see the faces and, you know, having a dialogue, you know. And so I'm enjoying having this dialogue because I, I love to have communication i love i'm just a bubbly fun person you know um okay let's move on because time is is far spent far far spent and Amen. so we do, uh, we do have ahead. a couple of hands missionary smith did you still have your hand up and pastor and um oh, okay um i did want to want to say something i stepped away um i remember um when i was going to dancing memorial we had fellowship dinner after church and it was two ladies they were friends and they always was hanging out together and they was looking for a seat you know to sit down and I said oh come on you can sit right here at the table with me and I sat down and I asked them I knew them and I always called them by their last name I would say sister Jackson hi sister Jackson and sister I forgot the other lady's name has been such a long time but I we talked and I asked them what is your first name I said I don't even know your first name so and that's how you know, at the table, getting to know them, I asked them to find out their first name, and then we talked about other things and where they used to go to church before coming to dancing memorial. But um, that's how you um, get to know someone is through communication and at the table. Um, I, I I just like the um, what what's what's being said today. I know Pastor used to always say, um, "Fellowship builds relationship." And I know when I first came into the church, I did not want to be fellowshipping with the saints. You no, know, if, if they wanted to go out to eat, now I, 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 my wife could go, but I'm going home. You know, but and then when you sit down with people and you start listening to them, and then more that I open up about who I am, then you see we have similar similarities, and people can get to know who I am, and I get to know who they are. So um, I enjoy fellowshipping with the saints and getting to know people and everything. So I just thank God for the relationships that we be building when we are fellowshipping. And I just thank God for it. Amen. All right. Um, you know, and one thing I, I to, to, to respond to uh, the first lady, you know, I always say that this is one of my things. I am a work in progress. I am a work in progress. If my daughter was on, on here, she would let you know. I tell this to my kid. I don't have it all. I don't know the answers, but I, I will pray. And if I can't get it, amen, I'll take you to somebody who get who can get you the answer. You know, that's what one of my little sayings, you know, that I'm a work in progress. I am not perfect. And I, I don't even try to be perfect. Amen. So we thank God for all those wonderful, wonderful testimonies. But then let me jump to this real quick, real quick, quick. What are some of the fears that people have about getting close? What's some of the fears you think that people have that will prevent them from getting close? Amen. We have um, Iga Burnett and Missionary Smith. One of the biggest fears for me is um, a lack of trust. And, and betrayal, you know, because when you share things with people, you don't know um, if you can trust them or if they're going to go and tell it to somebody else. 
So it's like I I I was hesitant about sharing a lot of things with people. You know, I still don't share everything with everybody. It's certain people that I share stuff with that I won't share with nobody else. So trust is a major issue that um that I deal with as far as sharing things with the same. Amen. I was gonna Amen. say the same thing. Amen. I was gonna say the same thing. Trust. If you've had um, people in your life that have done things to you where you can't trust, so you, you you build up this wall where you feel you can't trust anybody, it's difficult to to break that wall down and to start trusting people again when you've been hurt. It's hard to to trust. So I agree with what Brother said. Amen. I was going to say uh, fear of rejection. And then I saw some people uh, put in, in the chat, fear of being hurt, uh, not being accepted, and backstabbing and shame. I think that uh, getting close to someone means vulnerability and that people might see my weakness or, or, or they may, the mask that I wear, they might get to know the true me. And sometimes that's fear for me, you know, that, oh, I'm not really as tough as I portray myself to be, you know, um, or I'm not really, oh, I'm not that person or who I built myself up to be to people. So for me, it, it I, 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 I guess growing up in a house full of women, I, we didn't have a lot of backstabbing. We just, in our house, we told the truth and that's the way it was. If you didn't like it, we had a fight and then we loved each other tomorrow. So I learned how to bond with women early on in my life. So I've always, I hear a lot of women say they don't trust women, but I've always trusted women until they cross me. I, 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 and so it, it's, I haven't, ha I don't have that big issue. And I, I love getting, um, I don't know if I want to call it old, close but more intimate with people and so I think as time goes on in our lives I don't I don't think I was always like that you know just intimate with everybody I see but I think as time goes on in my life it really doesn't matter what you think about me because I know what God knows about me and so I don't have that fear when I'm around people in the church and if I don't want you to know something about me I'm not gonna tell you because when I tell you I am willing for you to tell anybody because don't nobody keep a secret. Okay, y'all get that next year. Somebody always tell, uh, I, I, can I give just a quick example? I go to meetings. This woman was in the meeting. She told about how her husband beat her up and did this and that and the other to her. And, and it was a women's meeting. And so, you know, and she was new. And so she left and uh, she never came back. So one of us seen her and what she said was, somebody told somebody what I said in the meeting and it got back to my husband and he beat me up. So the next meeting we had, everybody was wanting to know who, who would go and do something like that. And this young lady said, I'm guilty. I told my husband, I never thought he would betray me. So a lot of times those kind of things happen which lets me know that we always tell somebody, and, and and I know some of us don't tell nobody. We the best secret holders in the world. But but usually, someone if I'm not willing for everybody to know, I'm not gonna say it. So you know, so that trust thing it, it goes a long way. You you earn it and and you give it, and you get closer through it too. Yeah, I I agree with what you just said, Sister Smothers. But I was also gonna say add on to like people using it against you. Uh, you tell them who you are, you expose yourself and then they are able, when they're mad or whatever, they'll use it against you or they want to hurt you, you know? So um, like someone said in the chat, hurt people, hurt people. So when they feel hurt, then they want to use all the things that you ever told them in secret against you and make you, you hurt with them. Amen, brother Ramon King. Yeah, me, um, me personally, I've, um, I've been through some things in my life and I've been betrayed by people that I, you know, gave just, you know, opened my heart to and gave my all to. And, you know, so a lot of times I don't allow, really allow people to get too close to me because, 
you know, it's like, uh, not that I don't trust nobody, but, you know, you just never know. I kind of feed people with a long spoon because um, when they get, you allow people in and then, like uh, the sister was saying, you, you tell somebody something and then they go and tell somebody else. It's, you know, it's not like you, when you tell somebody, when you talk to somebody openly, you say, oh, I'm, uh, this is confidential. Or you tell somebody, hey, this is between me and you. And a lot of times uh, some people can't hold water and they'll definitely go and tell. And so I think that's why um, me personally, I just don't not, I want, I want to get close to people and want to be, you know, feel like, um, you know, have a companionship and, and friendship and stuff like that. But, um, like, I never, like, at the, at the same time, I feel like because of that, now I feel like I'm, I'm a loner because I'm always by myself because, um, I don't allow people to get too close to me because of the things that I've been through in my life. I just want to say to you, brother Ramon, you know what? I know we all have been hurt. All of us, not only you, but all of us have been hurt. So I just want you to take all of that stuff that you got and give it to God and let it go. And remember what our sister's mother said tonight. Don't tell nothing you don't want everybody else to know. Okay. So whatever else you got, you get in your closet and you talk to Jesus. Because he will keep all of your secrets and he won't tell none of them, okay? But you unload that right now. And if you find you a friend that you love, you be their friend. But you can't tell it all. I've learned that. You cannot tell it all. So again, my friend, if you don't want everybody to know it, don't tell it. Go in your closet and talk to Jesus. And he That's right. Mm-hmm. Amen. So Amen. Don't being a loner. When, when, when God sends somebody to be your friend, let them be your friend because this is all that we have and we don't want to be alone. Amen. But I just want you, I just wanted to encourage you and let you know that you are not alone, sir. We all have that. And be, trust me, the seat that I sit in, I got lots of that. But I have learned to give it to God. And he gives me that peace. And um, brother, um, Clint Scale, he's been having his hand up, and I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand from the reaction box. Sorry. So, Red, um, actually, uh, I agree with everything that everybody has said. You know, again, uh, continuing that that theme that it seems that hurt people hurt people, but also. Uh, coming to the table, some people are apprehensive because of perhaps of a fear of being rejected for who they are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, someone mentioned before about, you know, being in a vulnerable situation when you come to the table. And some, you know, and people like to just come to the table and be open and really show you who they are as a person. But a lot of times people get to that situation and they're apprehensive about it because they get rejected just for being who they are or they get ridiculed Morning for being who they are. So um, that's one, another thing that I'm not sure we really touched on that uh, can be a situation where people do not choose to come to the table. Amen, that's, that's everybody has spoke so wonderful. And that last one, you know, when you said that, um, you know, maybe people don't want to come to the table, you know, but everybody spoke well, time is running out, but everyone spoke very well. And if you look at it, we're being able, we're being honest and we're being vulnerable. We're telling, you know, how we feel, you know, and as brother and sisters in Christ, we're not going to hurt each other. We're not going to hurt one another as we, as we um, experience in this, this, this conversation. You know, and everybody have an opportunity to express themselves, you know, and so when we, we when we share these things, we want to make sure that we don't offend our sister and brother, you know, and some people are sensitive more than the other people are, but, but thank God for the dialogue that we're having right now, so when we at the table, 
you know, we going to be um, more watchful. We'll be more alert, you know, and, and, and not being able to uh, hurt one another. But we want to trust one another. Let's see what Jesus did. Let's see what Jesus did with his friends and the experience, you know, that he had with them in his life. And he walked with them. And because of time, we're not going to be able to do everything. But, but he walked with them. All right. He ate with them. You know, they learned together. They did favors for one another. They, they, they rested together. They went on boat rides together. They went to the mountain climbing together. And most of all, they prayed together. The advice that the first lady is giving, the advice that the pastor and the different ones that is expressing um, and coming to the table and expressing themselves. You know, one thing that I can see that has been implemented at Solid Rock Church of God of Christ, y'all pray together. Y'all pray with one another. You got each other's back. And that's a good thing to have one another's back because one day, want to see Jesus in peace. Amen. We want God to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Time is far spent. We thank God uh, for the topic. We thank God for the dialogue. Thank you for coming to the table. I heard someone say you might not want to come to the table, but it seemed like everyone was coming to the table. So we thank God for being able to express ourselves and to be able to talk about it. And, and, and in the house of the Lord, hey, we might not be together in the house, but we are family. Hallelujah. We are family and we got each other's back. Amen. You in the hands of the pastor. Come on, give God some praise, everybody. Would you just clap your hands? I know we might not be able to see your face, but come on, let us know you're clapping your hands, amen, that you're giving God praise. This was a tremendous lesson and so down to earth and so real. I'm, I'm glad that you came in with the part that the table is no, not always a table. Um, where our coming together can be with the walks and the talks and and for me, it's at the fish bank, and, you know, those kinds of things. We're there at the table. We're talking about things that are important. Thank you so much, Missionary uh, Bill Ivory. That was a wonderful lesson, so real. And it touched some nerves because I think many of us came to a place where we started saying, you know, I've, I've, I've said some things to some people, and I've gotten hurt by those things that I said, or I exposed myself. And uh, they used my exposure and messed up my picture. Glory to God. I, I've, I've been in situations where uh, I accidentally allowed some things to come out. I got excited and I said more than I should have said. Um, and that can put you in a real predicament. And understand that the enemy, the devil, will use those kinds of things to actually separate you from people with no reason to separate from them. The devil will tell you, you said too much. Everybody going to think, well, that's just him talking to you. Amen. So it's important that we understand, uh, glory to God, that these things we must do. We must interact. And our example that you gave us being Jesus and his disciples, glory to God. And please understand, they had some issues between them. They had some arguments between them. I, you often heard me talk about the fact that they were going to Capernaum, which is kind of Jesus's headquarters. That's where he always returned to Capernaum. And they were on their way to Capernaum. And on the way, the disciples was arguing. And when they got there, Jesus said to them, what were you arguing about on the way here? Glory to God. He, 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 he rebuked them. And just a few verses later, they were arguing again. <laughs> so, but they still fought together. They bind the devil and cast him out together. They stood beside one another. And so they didn't let disagreements break up their fellowship and their assignment in God. Can we say the same thing? We're not going to let our disagreement break up our assignment and fellowship in God. If you agree with that, if you can, put something in the chat box or put something in, you know, when your reactions, put a thumb up. I see some people doing that in hands. Amen. That means that you're taking uh, you're, you're taking uh, authority over your emotions and, and not challenging them. You've got to challenge this thing that the enemy brings to you. Amen. At the table in fellowship. Uh, I think it's over looking it up.
Peter, I think it is. Uh, and that talks about um, uh, walk, well, it's, it's actually in John, but it says walk in the light uh, as he is in the light. You have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us from all our sin. All right, so walk in the light as he is in the light. We'll have fellowship one with another, fellowship. And in the fellowship, there's going to be sometimes uh, disagreements and abrasion. That abrasiveness is what sharpens, the Bible says iron sharpens iron. That abrasiveness is what sharpens the iron, amen? And so and I was thinking of Peter, but he said, uh, we grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it's important for us to, to walk together, talk with uh, together, share with one another. Everybody ought to have somebody that they can share with. You might not share everything, but you need to get something, some things out of off your chest and out of your mind. Thank you, missionary. Let me tell everybody this. When you have a thought about something, a perspective on a thing, as long as you keep that perspective to yourself, everything you think about it is all right. It's right. It works out. It rattles around in your mind and it makes sense. But many times you'll open your mouth to say it. And it's different in your mind than it is coming out your mouth. I wish I was talking to five people. Glory to God. You have to understand that we need sometimes to talk to people. To interact with folks. We were made that way. Human beings are communal. We, we, we were made that way. Amen. And so uh, it is important, though, to use wisdom when you share. And finally, I want to say this. Church people are people in church. Church people are people in church. You know, we say we love the Lord and all that, but we're people in church. So we're human beings and we have human frailties. But God, as we talked about earlier, is growing us. He's developing us as we go. Amen. He's developing us. And sometimes we said something that we shouldn't have said, but we know now. And so we won't do that again. And so we apologize for hurting you. And if you give me another chance, I, I won't hurt you again. Maybe you don't want to tell me all the stuff you told me before, but, but give me an opportunity to, to continue our relationship, our fellowship, because we can help each other going down the road. Uh, and I, I, I don't know, there's a whole lot of folks who have said, I've been hurt in church. I, I've been hurt in church. Amen. And most of us, if we've been around for more than two weeks, we can say, I've been hurt in church. Amen. But the fact is, is that if you've been around for more than a month, you probably hurt somebody in church. So, amen. We, we just need to give each other a little grace. Come on, say grace. Yeah, you can write that in the chat box. Grace. We need to have a little more grace with one. And give us another shot. Give me another chance. Let me be the friend to you that I want you to be to me. Amen. You love the Lord. Come on, clap your hands, put it in, give God a praise right where you are. You love him. Thank you, missionary. What a provocative lesson, thought-provoking and challenging to all of us. Thank you so very much.